Welcome back. So now we're looking at chapter uh, 1.5, which is on powers. New concept in grade 7. Um, so let's put it in a problem first, in a context. And it's, some, it's a little tricky context because it's hard to come up with some examples in real life that really relate powers. Um, bacteria is a good example that can use it, um, or population uh, simulations. However, we're going to use something that's a little bit easier to understand. So let's say we have this computer, and a salesman wants to charge me $2 for the first day. And I said, that's a really good deal. Um, so for the first day, he's, he's going to charge me two dollars um for for this but then he says but the second day the price is going to go up so you're going to pay this uh you're going to pay a little bit more each day for this computer but i said you know what two dollars two dollars is still a really good price then he said well the second day you're going to have to pay four dollars you're going to have to pay twice as much as you paid the first day and then the third day um i want you to pay eight dollars for this computer i said well that's still kind of cheap for this computer after three days so i asked him how many days do i have to pay well he said you'll have to pay a total of ten days so I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, it can't really be that much expensive. I mean, like three days, I'm only up to, to $8 or really in a total of $14 that I paid so far. So my question is, um, what would the total cost be or what will the cost be after the 10th day? So the way I could do this is you build a table. Tables are always good because they organize your information and you're able to compare different sets of data um, in the set in the same kind of organization. So I'm going to create a table that looks like this, where the column on the left is the day, which I call the independent variable because I get to choose which day I get to stop on. And what changes due to each day is what we call the dependent variable and we'll use the cost as, um, as what changes with every day. So let's look for any pattern. So right now I know that I started with two, then I multiplied by two to get four, I multiplied by two to get eight, and I'm gonna multiply by two again to get the next day, which is 16. I can continue to multiply by two, and we can see that this number is getting gradually larger, but it's not just adding to itself, it's actually multiplying, it's getting, it's getting more and more large. The space in between each day, the cost is, is growing quite a bit every day. Um, so after the fifth day, I'm paying $32. Now, this example is a perfect example of what we call powers because when we continue to multiply something, we can represent that in a special form called a power. So if I just use my calculator or I use my head to multiply each day, it ends up that on the uh, eighth day, I'm at $256, $512, while on the tenth day, I'm now paying $1,024 on the 10th day. That plus everything else ahead of it adds up to a grand total of, well, $2,046 for this computer. That's quite expensive. But as you notice, look how small we started. And then only after the 10th day um, did the number get to be so large. That's why powers are so cool, because they make a number grow so quickly. Well, here's how we look at this power. The number that we are multiplying by each time is what we call the base. And the number of times that we are going to multiply it together. So in this time, in this case, we started with two. So that's the first multiplication. And so a total of 10 twos existed multiplied together to get the final total. This part is called the exponent. And this entire thing is called the power. So really what a power is, is a repeated multiplication. A power is a repeated multiplication. And it's a faster way of writing out this multiplication. Because 2 raised to the 10th power, or we could say 2 to the 10th power, or 2 exponent 10, or the 10th power of 2, um, can be written like this. It's 2 multiplied to it by itself a total of 10 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's actually 9 multiplication here, but there's 10 number 2's that exist. So there are 10 2's that are being multiplied together. And so the misconception, if you're in a lower grade, you would think 2 raised to the 10th power is the same thing as 2 times 10, which is 20. This, unfortunately, is a common mistake of all students who are studying powers from 
elementary school all the way up to higher level education. How, so if we look at this and we actually break this down into its multiplication and multiply them all together, we see that the answer is not 20, but rather 2046. So let's just take another example. Let's say 2 to the 5th power, or 2 raised to the 5th power, or the 5th power of 2. There are different ways of saying it. So the 5th power of 2, or 2 to the exponent 5, or 2 to the 5th power, how is that related to 2 to the 10th power? Well, 2 to the 10th power, you see there's 5, there's, sorry, there's 10 2s. 2 to the 5th power would mean that there's 5 2s in there. Someone very quickly might say, well, 2 to the 5th is half of 2 to the 10th. But is it really? Look at how many more 2s I have to add on or multiply by to get to the same answer. And 2 to the 5th, if we go to our chart, is 32. That is certainly less than half of 1,024. So 2 to the 5th is not a half of 2 to the 10th. But it's actually 32, well, it's 32 times less than 2 to the 10th. It's quite a bit. So uh, if we look at 2 to the 6th, how can we get that one? Well, we could take 2 to the 5th, which was 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and then we basically are just adding an extra 2 in there. So 2 to the 6th looks like that. So 2 to the 6th is twice as much as 2 to the 5th. There's a couple of ways to actually use your calculator to solve these problems. And so there's a, on your calculator, you have certain buttons that'll work like that. On our calculator here on the computer, it's the one that looks like X within a little exponent Y. So uh, some calculators, you have X to the Y. Sometimes you might have a calculator that says Y to the small X, or you might even have a calculator that has a caret symbol on it. And that also represents an exponent. If you don't have any one of these on a scientific calculator, you could also use just a regular calculator and repeat the equal sign. If you repeat the equal sign, so if I do five, 2 times 2 equals 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 equals, then I'll get a power out of that. It's a little tricky because you actually have to look and see which how many times it's growing to find out your answer. So just to recap, a power includes a base and the exponent. The base number is the number that is being multiplied. The exponent number is the number of times that you will see that number. So this is the number of times the number exists. The number shows up. Whereas the base is the number being multiplied. So if you're really unsure, what you should do is just show the expansion of the power every single time. And if that's too difficult, use an easier example and try to see if it works out with the other examples as well. So hopefully you understand that. We'll go over this in class again. And if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you understood it.